Table 12 is brought to you by Favor. No app delivers more for Texas. Today we're at 1701 Barbecue in Beaumont with owner Blue Broussard. Blue, thank you so much for having us. This food looks delicious. Tell us what we're looking at. Absolutely. Uh, we've just kind of got a, uh, I would say, an offering of everything, just about. Uh, we've got our, uh, start with our traditional items that we serve that we're kind of known for. That's our in-house smoked brisket. Uh, we've got our sausage that we make from our brisket trimming. So all of our sausages are made here in-house. Which one you got right there? Do we even know? You tell me. All right, it's looks got like we got a yeah. Looks mm -hmm. like we got a jalapeno cheese. Mm -hmm. So all of our sausage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our our sausage is pretty unique in that the fact that it's uh, it's all beef. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a pork casing, but everything inside is beef. You'll, I don't I haven't found that really too many places uh, in Beaumont. I think like Patillos and Gerard's, uh -huh. they'll do the all beef links. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason that we do that is because that's really, we're trying to utilize everything that we have here at the restaurant. Right. So we're in here trimming briskets every single day. So what we're left with is a lot of beef that we've already paid for. If we didn't make it into sausage, we'd be throwing it away. Okay. Uh, and so there's no reason for us to buy any extra meat to make it. We've got plenty of it. Yeah. And it just happens to be beef that we have. Uh, and we've just kind of found out a, a ratio that works for us uh, you know, it, it is kind of unique. It's got its own flavor. I mean, we've mm -hmm. got one, the one you had was uh, jalapeno cheese, and mm -hmm. we've got a regular one that we do as well. Mm -hmm. That sausage is delicious. It's got mm -hmm. the snap that I like yeah. once it's cooked. That's important to me. Um, and also, it's it's real thick. Like, it's not mushy. Yeah, um, it, it, it's a coarse grind. And to me, like, whenever, uh, you know, kind of like my favorite way to eat it right there, it's almost kind of got like a summer sausage taste to it to me. Yeah. And that's kind of what we were going for, something a little different. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like I said, uh, Patillo's, been around for a long time. Yes. Um, I love their love their links. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like uh, Gerard's is the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie's has some of those oh, yeah. links as well. And so those guys, in my opinion, were that's that's what they do, and they mm -hmm. do a great job of it. We want to do something different. And yes. that was kind of our answer. So. Yeah, I, I would say the texture yeah. makes yours different than theirs. Yeah. But all great. We've been to Charlie's before. Yeah, love well, Charlie's. Uh, we've got our smoked turkey breast, which in my, in my opinion is probably the sleeper on the menu. Tell us about why your turkey is so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there are a few secrets to that, mm -hmm. but uh, I will tell you that to me, it is the it's the sleeper item on the menu. Mm -hmm. Whenever I go to a barbecue restaurant, turkey's probably the you know the very very bottom of things that I will think about ordering because yeah. everybody's had that bad Thanksgiving turkey experience at yes. some point in their life. Yes, they've eaten that dry piece of turkey, and so I think turkey kind of gets a bad rap. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you is that we know that turkey is very, very lean. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever it comes to cooking, if something is lean, then you may want to try and add a little bit of fat back to it in the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some kind of tricks to the trade that we do use for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite things on the menu. And to me, it's so versatile. Uh, you know, I've made turkey sandwiches with it. Uh, I put it in salads. I love this turkey because it's the opposite of dry. It's super moist. Yeah. I know you might inject it with something, right? We actually don't. Oh, you don't? We okay. actually don't. We Sorry. actually don't. No, it's mm -hmm. okay. It's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it does It does have some moisture added back to it kind of halfway through the, the cooking process. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, that's a big part of it. It's delicious. And I like to buy extra and keep it in my fridge for the week. So if I get hungry, I can make a sandwich. Yeah, to me, that's like the perfect thing to, uh, to, re to reheat. Yes. Don't sleep on the turkey, y'all. Not at all. Uh, we've got our half chickens that we smoke. We've got our... Uh, pork ribs, which are spare ribs, and then over here on the left-hand side, you see we've got a big beef rib, which we serve daily every day. It makes it a little bit unique uh, for a restaurant in our area. Now, tell us about beef ribs and why people don't find them everywhere. Yeah, so um, our beef ribs in particular, they come from 44 Farms, mm -hmm. uh, we're sourced right here in, in Cameron, Texas. <laughs> uh, but you know, the reason that you don't see a lot of uh, a lot of beef ribs because a lot of the times, whenever they're whenever they're uh, going through the the harvesting process for a cow, a lot of times that may end up on your ribeye steak or, mm -hmm. or some steak, some other cut of mm -hmm. meat. It's just a lot more economical. Of. And I'll tell you the other thing too, they're they're pretty expensive and they take, yeah. up, they take up a lot of real estate on one of our barbecue pits back there. So mm -hmm. it's just really kind of a tough thing to serve, but we've managed to find a way to do it specifically with these ribs where it makes sense for us and for the customer. Uh, but it's just like getting like a really, really marbled uh, ribeye that you go to a nice steakhouse and get. They are expensive, but if you're, if, you know, I will tell you it is a special bite and 
but that's that's kind of why. So. Well, it is very special, yeah. and you're treating today. So that was the first thing I had to have. <laughs> it's so great. It is tender. If you ever never had a beef rib, it's worth the splurge. Um, you know, you don't have to have it every time you come, but you definitely need to try it once. And um, it's got a little bit of the fatty, but then it's got a lot of great meat on it. And just a few of our sides that we offer, uh, we've got some of our pit beans, which have some brisket, some sausage in them, pepper jack mac and cheese, uh, jalapeno relish potato salad, and then a uh, street corn salad as well. So we do offer a few more, but this is kind of what we could fit on the table here today. Uh, the, uh, the, the thing that, you know, I've been the most proud of and all of our crew up here the most is really, really proud of is that Everything that you see up here, Warren, uh, it, it's all made from scratch daily. Uh, you know, everything from, from the sides to our desserts. We've got some banana pudding here. We've got some chocolate cake creation going on. That's different every day. <laughs> nice. uh, but everything's made daily, and we've just got a really uh, talented group of people. Uh, so uh, it's just a neat place to be. Yes, it is. And it's one of my favorite spots. I've been following you, you know, when you had the food truck under a different name. Yeah. And now you have your brick and mortar. For those that don't know, you made the Texas Monthly Top 50 Barbecue Spots in Texas, which is a huge deal after your first year of being open. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite the surprise. Uh, we were, uh, you know, we thought that we were way too new of a business to even get anybody's attention outside of the area. So, uh, you know, to say that that was very flattering, uh, you know, that's a, that's an understatement. Uh, there's some uh, some big names on that list that have been in the industry for a very, very long time. And, uh, you know, just to be included in that is such an honor. Uh, very, very proud of, uh, of our team here that really put in some hard hours, you know, uh, a lot of hard work uh, to get to that point. And it's definitely because of them that we were able to get that recognition. And uh, it's something that we don't take lightly. And, come in every single day and, and get to work, just kind of keep uh, put our heads down and try to put out the best product that we can. And let me try one of the sides. So my sure. favorite side here is the pepper jack mac and cheese. And when I tell you mm. just kind of made in house, like they're actually mm -hmm. you know, making everything there. There's not any Velveeta that's going in there, which is nothing wrong oh, with Velveeta. Yeah. I love Velveeta yeah. guys. <laughs> but no, I mean, they're literally every right. single day making that. Mm -hmm. And so it does have a little different flavor, a little different style to it, a little bit of different texture, but that's the reason why. It does, and it's delicious. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I love the pepper jack and the big noodles and all that. Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not, I don't want to ignore this sauce on the table. Tell us more. You've started bottling your sauces. Yeah, so um, I guess literally probably about a week uh, before we open up the restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been messing, messing around making sauces for years, but like a week before we opened up, we came up with this. And uh, I just, I made it up one morning in the kitchen and uh, just, I wanted something different. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of places have like a really, really thick sauce and there's a time and a place for that. I like all that, but I wanted it to be a little different. Mm -hmm. This is more kind of what I would call kind of, maybe almost kind of like a mop sauce that you may find oh, yeah. really kind of like out like in, at, uh, at Cooper's like in Atlanta or okay. something like that. Mm -hmm. We wanted a sauce that really kind of highlighted the meats and not kind of covered the flavor. Because we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. We take a lot of time in our cooking process to try to use good products. Um, and so that was our answer. People have seemed to like it. And uh, we finally got it bottled. Uh, it's available uh, you know, for purchase uh, in store, online, on our uh, website. It's on Amazon. And we've got it in a bunch of uh, local distributors as well. Fantastic. Well, the barbecue definitely doesn't need sauce, but it's a great accompaniment That's if right. you decide to go that way. Well, barbecue is big business in Texas. And for those who might not be familiar, you guys specialize in Central Texas barbecue. So can you kind of elaborate on what that is? Absolutely. Uh, you know, so there's a, barbecue's always been big in Texas, as we know. I'd say probably the last, you know, 12, 13 years or so specifically, there's really been a big boom in barbecue. And I know that you've seen that. You keep up with the industry. Uh, and that really kind of started in the Austin area with what people were calling a Central Texas style barbecue. Uh, and essentially what that means is we're just kind of taking the highest quality meats and we're simply seasoning them. Uh, we're cooking in offset smokers. So a lot of the focus is primarily on the quality of the meats, sim simple seasonings, and really taking uh, you know, the right approach as far as cooking them the proper way. It's just really kind of a craft movement. You know, this is also you hear Central Texas style barbecue, now you're starting to hear the terms craft barbecue. Uh, you know, we've really got some talented people here just specifically at our restaurants, uh, you know, that are known as, you know, pit masters around the industry. Yeah. 
Uh, but you know, these are guys that really just, they like to barbecue and they're really passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really the, the biggest thing that I would say Central Texas style barbecue is and kind of the craze that you've heard a lot about here lately. Yeah. So Blue, tell us what got you into the whole barbecue business. So, you know, I, I'd say I'm kind of just like anybody else. I, honestly, at first I was just a fan of barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, uh, you know, in a family uh, who's gatherings were always focused around food mm -hmm. and not barbecue specifically so I kind of had that in my upbringing uh, you know we we mentioned earlier uh, I think probably in about 2015 or so a good friend of mine and I uh, David Thompson we started a barbecue trailer here in town we'd set up local do special events uh, but never really had the time to really kind of focus on it full time mm -hmm. uh, and then in December of 2020 whenever 1701 opened you know, we finally had an opportunity to uh, to really kind of put our heads down and, and really get serious about it. Uh, but you know, I've just uh, I've always uh, enjoyed food, and I've always enjoyed entertaining people. And so, uh, you know, it's, it just happens to be barbecue for me in particular. Uh, I grew up cooking a lot of steaks. I tell people I actually probably cook more steaks than I have briskets, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, but just, uh, yeah, just I've, I've always enjoyed, uh, you know, like I said, just doing events and entertaining people, and this was just kind of natural to me. So what can people expect when they come into 1701? So, you know, whenever you come to 1701, uh, you know, it sounds kind of cliche, but, uh, you know, we really do want it to be a very, very uh, inviting place for you to come. Uh, you know, whenever you pull up in the, the parking lot, uh, we've got speakers outside the building. Uh, we're playing music. Uh, you know, all our music uh, is is, is playlist, our, our playlist that we put together. Mm -hmm. It's uh, music that we would listen to, you know, if we were cooking uh, barbecue in the backyard at the house. So I really want to kind of get that, that feeling going for you. As soon as you come in, you know, you can smell barbecue in the air. You, you hear some good music going. Uh, you come in, we're a small little place, uh, but we're proud of our small little place. And it's a, uh, it's counter service, so kind of cafeteria style. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can come in and talk with one of the, uh, with one of the meat cutters up there and, you know, They'll kind of instruct you through the whole process so you can, uh, everything's itemized, you can get as little or as much as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we've got a little dining room here as well. Uh, and so we've uh, got a lot of takeout, but we also, you know, we do have space here as well. I think uh, probably the main thing that I would like to let people know, we're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, have really been, uh, you know, fully supported by our community since day one. And we're really, really uh, thankful for that. Uh, but the one thing that I would like to say, I think, I think we kind of maybe got a bad rap out there that we're, that we, you know, if you don't get there by a certain time that, uh, you may have a little tough time getting in the door sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just want to let everybody know that, you know, I think by about 1230 or so, it's kind of the sweet spot. That's a secret spot to come in and get some barbecue. All right. You tip. probably, you might've figured that one out too. I figured that out <laughs> early, but I did come in today yeah. at 130 and I got some turkey and yeah. that is one of my favorite items. Uh, they're all really my favorite, but uh, that is something I order more often than not. And you guys don't have a phone number, so don't try to call. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get in line, or you can use Favor app, and they'll stand in line for you and bring it to you for lunch. Uh, so there's multiple ways to get this delicious cube. And not only are you a restaurant, you kind of travel around the state doing, doing um, like pop-ups. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy what uh, what barbecue has uh, allowed us to do. Uh, we started getting inviting to invited to a lot of different festivals across the state. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a lot of people are familiar with the Red Dirt Barbecue Music Festival in Tyler. Uh, there's a Troubadour Barbecue Music Festival uh, as well, and then uh, Texas Monthly has a big barbecue event every year too. So. Uh, you know, between between those right there, just specifically, that's got us hitting about four or five different dates across the state. Uh, Houston Barbecue Festival, uh, they just did an event. We were just there as well, uh, and those are really really neat things for people to go to. Uh, you know, you, you pay a ticket, you come in, and they'll have 20 to 30 barbecue restaurants there. You can come in, kind of get a sample from everybody across the state, and uh, it's just a, a we we feel honored to be included in that in that group and be invited to. How long does it take you guys to smoke like a brisket? So um, all of our all of our briskets we're cooking them probably anywhere from 12 to 14 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it's uh, it's long days, it's early mornings, uh, but we knew that getting into it. Yeah. Uh, and we've just uh, again, you know, we've got a really really uh, dedicated and passionate group of folks here who uh, all put in a helping hand. Uh, you know when it uh, when when we first started out, I I was one of those guys that was in it all the time and 
and I can't say that much anymore because we've got some guys that are really just kind of you know, taking the reins and uh, yeah. really taking over and uh, I'm, I'm super proud to, to uh, call them my friends and for them to be a part of our 1701 family. Yeah, you kind of inspired a whole generation of pitmasters <laughs> here that like, you know, weren't necessarily into it before you started doing what you're doing. I think it's amazing. And where can people find out more about 1701? Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we, we post regularly on all of our social media pages. Uh, you know, we're obviously Instagram, Facebook, uh, 1701barbecue.com uh, for any updates. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're very, very active, you know even to the point where a lot of times, you know, if we're getting low on a certain item, you know, we'll post about it and let people know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we do our best to engage with everybody and uh, we appreciate the support and uh, and always enjoy uh, talking to people whenever they reach out to us on social media. Blue, thanks so much for having us today. The food was delicious and the company even better. I hope you all take time to visit 1701 Barbecue. You won't be disappointed. Tune in next time to Table 12. Brought to you by Favor. No app delivers more for Texas.